So it's no secret at this point in the Resident Evil franchise that we've seen some gruesome things happen to some of our favorite characters throughout the years, with a plethora of crazy mutations, attacks from monsters and whatnot, which also by now, Ethan Winters has displayed this example perfectly. With his roles in Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil Village, it just made you wonder on how on earth this supposed regular human be able to take on so much damage, let alone lose a couple of limbs, then proceed to reattach it without any kind of repercussions. Which now begs the question, how did he survive all of his injuries? What was so special with Ethan's body? And how should this compare to the regular human anatomy and the many other factors that deal with injuries and trauma to any regular human physiology? What the fuck? Well, in this video, we'll be explaining the incredible biology of Ethan Winters and how this supposed regular human compared to some real world applications in terms of injuries and trauma, and how the mole strain from both RE7 and RE Village played a role in his overall biology. <laughs> Hey, it's, uh, it's Ethan. Oh, hey. You alright? You just disappeared the other night. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. It's Mia. She's not dead, she's alive. She, she's back. Well, to start things off, the story of Ethan starts in Resident Evil 7, and to my surprise, many haven't really played the game. So when coming into Resident Evil Village, many events and very important details may have been missed. Even at the start of RE Village, we're given the option of watching a quick summarization of the events during RE7. But again, this small summary lacks the many small important details that Ethan went through during that game. More specifically, all the injuries he was dealt with, the discovery of the mold strain and its effects on those infected, and the long-term effects of the mold infection and the subsequent constant mutations. Well, in this case, just for clarification's sake, Ethan did sustain many injuries during his first run in the RE franchise, which some examples shown here. Welcome to the family, son. But with this massive trauma to his body and limbs, you think that this would have been the end for this regular human? Well, that would have been the case, until we see him casually patch himself up using staples or using a first aid liquid to reattach his severed limbs, which had many Resident Evil fans out there scratch their heads as to how was this even possible. Because coming into Resident Evil 7, Ethan from what we knew was just a regular guy who was sent a weird video message from his missing wife Mia, setting up his story of making his way to the Baker residence, and throughout this story, he definitely had his hands full when dealing with his crazy family. Well, with this premise in mind, that still doesn't explain how he was able to sustain so much damage and reattach his limbs and act as though nothing has happened. Because in a regular human biological sense, the notion of one losing a limb due to some traumatic injuries would render those affected to be debilitated in a massive sense. Because in this example of him having his arm literally chainsawed off by Mia, well, with that alone, so much damage was done with all the muscles and ligaments, the destruction of both his radius and ulnar bones, and more importantly, the severing of his arteries, veins, and nerves. So sustaining this much trauma to his limb, Ethan at this point if not placed right smack in the middle of the Baker residence or Resident Evil storyline, the best course of action for him is to tourniquet his affected arm and hopefully make it to a medical facility to reattach his now severed limb. And time is of the essence, because the lack of oxygen to the now removed portion of his arm will cause his cells and tissue to start dying. I mean, just imagine yourself without any oxygen for a prolonged amount of time until we finally succumb to the hypoxic environment. Even a small amount of time without oxygen would cause permanent damage to your brain. But in this case, with Ethan and his severed limb, we know for the fact that stapling it back on was a somewhat comical moment, especially with a lack of details of reattaching bones, muscles, arteries, veins, and especially the nerves. Also, as we know so far with modern medicine, the reattachment of severed nerves never truly is a recoverable feat. At best, one may barely have the same ADLs or activities of daily living once having the arm cut off and having it reattached later on. Also, the amount of time his limbs severed away from his body plays a major role, again which plays with a lack of oxygen and perfusion to the tissue of the now removed arm. 
but in Ethan's case again, like mentioned earlier, is either stapled back together or doused in a liquid first aid, which results in a complete reattachment of his limbs and seemingly with full functionality. So with that premise in mind, much more damage was taken by Ethan, some being blunt force trauma to the excessive cuts and stabbings from the featured antagonist in RE7, but through it all, he was able to survive and literally be in one piece. Again, bringing up the question on how on earth is he still alive, let alone having a couple of his limbs cut off. <laughs> Well, that would be answered in Resident Evil Village, but before it does, again, he will suffer through some horrific trauma and injuries prior to the big revelation about his body. Also, I'd like to mention that prior to RE Village, the DLC of N of Zoe gave us a small hint as to what Ethan could have ended up like if the circumstances were different. Because in that DLC, we had Joe Baker, the brother of Jack Baker, saving his niece after the events of RE7, which the important detail would have been his constant encounters with a swamp looking creature and no matter how much damage and injuries he deals with this creature, he seems to keep coming back for more. Well by the end of the DLC, we find out that this humanoid swamp creature was actually Jack Baker, who we presumed dead in the main title game in RE7, but somehow was able to return and mutate into this sloughing and horrid amalgamation. What? But wait a minute, you may be asking, how does this even correlate with Ethan and his biology? Well for one, we know that the two characters have similarly sustained so much damage during this game, with Jack Baker seen to have been ran over by a car, burned, chainsaw, exploded, and so much more. She wants me to do this. I have to show her how to hold her. She wants us all to show her our love. You don't disappoint her now, do you? We can't do that. What are you talking about? Your new sister. <laughs> Ethan similarly had his fair share of traumatic bodily injuries as well, but what the two had in common is a constant damage to their body and their unusual recovery from all the trauma. Well, the end of Zoe DLC gives us some light in Jack Baker's constant regeneration, which is stated in this file. We finish analyzing the tissue samples believed to be from Jack Baker. The cells exhibit an extraordinary resilience to physical and chemical damage. The E series mutamycetes secretes a telomerase like enzyme through the cell wall, causing the abnormal activation of the ERK pathway to achieve four cell division, quickly regenerating damaged tissue. However, the repeated cell division quickly leads to the breakdown in the intercellular structure, leading to the sloughing, slurry-like effect we've observed in the collected tissue samples. Our working hypothesis puts this down to the cells reaching their hayflick limit. Note that the samples from the other family members, the wife Marguerite, the son Lucas, and the daughter Zoe do not exhibit the same extreme regenerative properties. The symptoms may differ from subject to subject, further studies required. So after reading that file, there were several important points to remember that both pertains to Jack Baker and Ethan, which here is stated that the mold strain infection has given him extreme resilience to both physical and chemical damage, all part due to the telomerase-like enzyme from the mold strain, activating the ERK pathway. So the first important factor to note here is the enzyme called telomerase, which is a component that opposes the gradual cell deterioration as we age in a natural lifespan, which the main component of of cell aging and eventual dying is due to the sequence of DNA at the end portion of our chromosomes called telomeres. So in this case with Jack Baker, the natural telomere or natural cycle of cell death or aging is inhibited due to the telomerase enzyme from the mold strain, explaining his constant regeneration rate and the recoveries from all of his injuries. Well, with this aspect to him would have been a great ability, but even with this telomerase enzyme from the mold, Jack's cells can only handle so much, eventually causing what they called sloughing of his tissue, which if you guys didn't know, any tissue sloughing from any human is a very horrid thing to see. So as to Jack Baker, this results in him looking like the grotesque swamp man in this DLC. 
But since, as mentioned before, that his cells can only take on so much even with the constant regeneration, eventually his body and cells has reached of what they call the Hayflick limit, which this theory states that the cells can only divide a certain amount of times, with a general sense of probably ranging between 40 to 60 times. So with that said, the utter limit of Jack Baker's regenerative abilities and his cells pushed to the absolute edge, the physical aspect to his body finally succumbs to all of the injuries explaining his Swamp Man creature look and his eventual defeat after so much damage. Even the mole strain at this point couldn't recover from all the trauma his body has been dealt with. But how does this go back to Ethan? Well, we do get a huge revelation in Resident Evil Village, but the lead up to the secret has been hinted by his wife Mia in these scenes. I, I keep telling you, it's not Rose that I'm worried about. Well, then what are you worried about? Look. Look. She's gonna be fine, I just know it. What else matters? We matter, Ethan! You matter! You just won't- Mia, what are you talking about? Is there something you're not telling me? What do you mean he's gone? He's dead. I'm sorry, Mia, but we have to leave. We have to destroy this village. No! You're wrong. I tried to keep this a secret, but... You don't understand how special he is. You mean you didn't think it was weird? No matter how much you got hurt? Remember? Baker House. You were murdered by Jack. You died there three years ago. That's that's impossible. No way. You shouldn't even be able to walk around. Quit messing with my head. You shouldn't be walking. Screw you! <laughs> what? What am I? I? I... I did all that. <laughs> Rose... Mia... I... So in the end, it's finally revealed that Ethan has actually become a mold being, this vision and revelation only happening after his supposed death from Mother Miranda. So the point that Mia said that Ethan was special was the fact that he was a mold being, explaining his recoveries from all the injuries he suffered through in both RE7 and RE Village. And from what we learned from Jack Baker's infection with the mold, this place very similar to Ethan, but in Jack Baker's case was in a more extreme case. Also, Ethan did not suffer the gross trauma that Jack incurred, though he did have his moments. So from what we've learned about the mold producing the enzyme telomerase, Ethan's regenerative ability Abilities had some merit when compared to Jack Baker's, because all in all, this ability of the mole strain is a characteristic that those infected with it displays. But another question was brought up was that if Ethan became a mold being, how did he retain his human consciousness and didn't succumb to becoming either a mindless monster or become insane like Jack Baker? Well, the information we found in Resident Evil Village revealed that the Megamycete, the origins from where the mole strain came from, was known to be able to catalyze 
dialogue and absorb consciousness. This of course could have been played out with Ethan, that even though he was a mold being, that the human consciousness that the mold was able to absorb was still retained in his body, not letting him succumb to all the insanity, but like the rest of the characters who were infected by the mold or Megamycee. By the end, they would display the same petrifying aspect when defeated, and their flesh crumble into pieces. This characteristic is similar to what would eventually happen to Ethan by the end of Resident Evil Village, which is displayed right here. Which his good hand crumbling like Mother Miranda, Evelyn, Donna Bediviento, and Alcina Dimitrescu, to which this indicated that even the mole strain coursing through his body was at its absolute limit due to all of his injuries, though he did not have the sloughing of his tissue like Jack Baker did. And knowing this, Ethan made his final heroic act to save his family and Chris Redfield. Anyways, what did you guys think of Ethan's biology and how the mole strain was the main proponent to his regenerative abilities? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed the content, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day, and this is Hey Deva, and I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>